Hey guys, Chris again from ClassicVWBugs.com and in this video I want to talk to you about the reproduction Porsche banjo wheel that you could pick up by a company called Flat4. Uh, what's really nice about this wheel is that the original wheels guys are pretty pretty expensive. So if you want to put this in your vintage Volkswagen or vintage Porsche or something like that, uh, these can go for thousands of dollars. I've seen them. And Flat4 has been doing this for quite some time now. For the past few years, I've been actually putting them on our cars and they look fantastic. Um, I mean, it's instead of it being a resin material around here, it's it pretty much a heavy duty uh, impact plastic, uh, so to speak. And, uh, but it's, it's got a really nice look to it and it's got a really vintage look to it. And when I throw them in my Volkswagens and I go to car shows, uh, people really seem to love it. You can basically pick up this, uh, this wheel, but you're going to need an adapter and you're going to need a horn button to go with it. And, uh, they've actually uh, corrected a few problems over the years too, which is really nice. And, uh, I'm going to just basically go over this with you and give you a review, give you my take. So basically, um, you can get this for any year beetle. They have black ones, they have ivory ones. But I'll be honest with you, uh, the ivory I think is the best. Uh, black is pretty cool too. I actually had a black one in my black 51 split window at one time, which looked really nice. Uh, so depending on the car uh, that you want to put it in. Uh, but I will tell you is that I think it fits more, just my opinion, I think it fits more for 50s, uh, 59 and earlier Beetle. Uh, and why do I say that? Well, because it just feels more period for that time. Once the 60s rolled around, I think they were... Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, um, you know, sh going away from this look. Uh, so I like this and for my 50s cars, the oval windows, split windows, uh, 58, 59 Beetle. It just kind of goes with the interior, okay, uh, and the coloring that they had in those years. Uh, the other reason why I like it just for the 50s is because you need an adapter to get this wheel to work on your Beetle. Now, unless you change your steering column, say for a 63 Beetle and you go pick one from a uh, 58 or 59 Beetle or you know, something like that or an oval window Beetle, the adapter that comes that you have to buy, and CIP1.com actually does this really nice. They put the whole kit together for you and uh, you can purchase uh, this. And what's really nice, here's the adapter that you need. I don't know if you can see that. I can put it right there. Okay. now. You can actually, this is two pieces here. You can actually take off this top part. And all it is is just the little uh, Allen screws that are in there. Now these screws used to be horrible, uh, but they've seemed to have corrected that problem. You take these Allens out. I don't know if you can see the screws in there. Okay, take these screws out and you could take this top piece off. You don't need to use this top piece. And then you got this piece here that will go right to the bottom of the banjo right here. Okay, so that'll mount kind of like that. Now look at that. That is a, a space, right? Now you take this middle section off and it'll, it'll go down even closer. Now what happens is, the, yeah, now when you're sitting in the car, the steering wheel is actually closer to you, which is kind of a, kind of an issue, you know. It's not too bad, like I said, for the 50s cars. It's when you get to the 60s Beatles, they sell an adapter to work for your car, but it's, it's huge. And it, it looks really gigantic. If you've ever seen some pictures online of, the, of a reproduction banjo wheel on, say, a 63 Beetle or something, the, it's, it's gigantic, the chrome piece. It's much bigger, and your steering wheel sits that much closer to you. So that's part of the reason why I don't go with a banjo wheel for 60s Beetles, because that steering column change is basically has to work with the splines in here. And the adapter that they make for those uh, later Beetles is just it's too big. I really wish they would make... Uh, a better piece here that has splines maybe already into this banjo because that's how the original banjos were. They didn't have an adapter like this. Uh, so you just have to, you know, too bad they couldn't put splines in there. Hopefully flat forwards listening to this and maybe they could uh, make that correction. Uh, but overall, once you put that on, then you got your horn button and horn buttons. They have several horn buttons that look like this. And uh, my client that's going in this gold car behind me, they're going with the uh, the old lady that you see here, okay, the uh, the, the old lady, the uh, just the gold woman here, <laughs> the golden lady, uh, that's what they basically call that, yep, golden lady ba uh, button, I've been using St. Christopher button, 
They have a, a bunch of, they even have the Wolfsburg button as well, which also looks nice. And we've used that before too. Now the, the, the problem I've had over the years with the banjo, let me get a little bit closer here for you and you see what's going on. When it comes time to put this button on, this could be tricky. A lot of times, I don't know if you can see on here, but there's nubs. See this nub? That's basically to hold the button in place and make it nice and tight. When you put this on in the past, it's very tricky to get these in. So I usually grease the perimeter of the button so it slides in here. Okay, but the problem is once that's in there, it's a good chance it's very tough to get out. If you ever have to uh, replace the wheel or go, you know, you want to check the wiring or something with the horn. So I try not to put it in all the way. So once you get it locked down in the wheel, I basically still leave a little bit of a gap. I don't push it all the way in so it's flush. I let it sit up just a bit so I can get in there if I have to later on because this gets really tight in there, guys. So I definitely recommend putting some grease on there. Um, and even now, just trying to get it in, it's tough to get in, so I ha sometimes have to bend uh, the chrome a little bit here so it fits into that hole. Uh, but just be careful, once you have this, this horn button in, it's very tough to get it out. You're going to have to also probably extend your horn wire. The horn wire that comes out, you're gonna might, you might have to add an extension to it so you can now reach the button because of this adapter. So. Uh, once you have that all set up, you're going to mount, again, the mount on the back of the banjo and tighten it down with those Allen screws. Just get your little Allen wrench, tighten these screws down. I do recommend using uh, Loctite on these screws just to make sure they don't back off. Tighten those down. And then when it comes to putting this on your steering column, as you can see, see there's the adapter. Like I said, in the 60s, uh, Beatles, that adapter is much, much bigger, and you don't need that other half that you see here, okay? So you could pretty much use that as a hockey puck if you want. Uh, but just make sure now, once you put it on your steering column, slide it all the way down on the splines like you see there. Here's your nut with the lock washer on it to tighten down. So you can't use your original. It won't work in here. The, the nut is too big. And even if you could get it in there, you're not going to be able to get a socket around the nut to tighten the adapter down. So what some people do too is like if you want to tighten the adapter down first onto the steering column, you can do that and then put the wheel on top and then tighten the, the screws down. So just make sure you line up the screws here with the back. There's all, you know, the positions of the holes are, are back here. So, uh, but then yeah, they give you that nut and then just make sure you want this washer, this is a lock washer to hold, to hold this nut in place so it doesn't back off and you want to make sure the cone face is down, okay, because you want that to squish against okay, uh, the inside here, okay, the inside of uh, the adapter, all right. So, uh, but uh, that's a you know, quick brief how you hook it up. It's pretty self-explanatory. It's not difficult, uh, but I just want to say that as a review, I do recommend it. I think they're really cool to look at. Um, you know, it just adds a lot of class. So I think it actually brings value up on the card. If you have an original wheel and it's all cracked up, it's all battered up, and you got to get another one, original steering wheels can cost can cost some money. You can get them cat recasted, or you have to buy a new one um, or, a, re or uh, a restored one, and that can get really costly. I've seen them upwards of five, six hundred, eight hundred thousand dollars for some wheels. So um, there are some people that are uh, overseas. In Thailand, I've seen, I think a friend of mine has bought a banjo that a guy makes without the, th without the three um, uh, banjo bars here, just two, and uh, has a horn button in the middle with a, with a peachy ring. Uh, really remarkable, a really beautiful wheel, but it's a good thousand bucks or so, $1,200. Um, so if you're on a budget and you want your car to look, uh, have some class to it and you don't have the money to either restore your original wheel or to find a restored wheel that's going to not break the bank, you can go with the banjo wheel. I'm not saying this is cheap, uh, but you know it'll probably run you around three, four hundred dollars uh, to get the whole setup with the adapter, the horn button. Depending on even what horn button you go with, some of the horn buttons are more money than others. Uh, so.
But check out CIP1.com. They have the whole banjo set up and the, and the adapter. And uh, I, I recommend it. I think it looks really nice. I think it adds a lot of class. But again, I'm more of a 59 and earlier hookup. All right, guys. That's that tip or in review for today. Chris at ClassicVWBugs.com or visit my website, www.ClassicVWBugs.com. If you have any comments, suggestions, maybe there's a way to rig or hack this wheel to go on later wheels, leave it in the comment section below. I'm all ears. I'd love to hear it. Anything to get this shorter uh, because it could be kind of standoffish when the wheel's this close to you and you're driving down the road. It's kind of, kind of weird. You're, you, it's a little uncomfortable. Uh, but for the 50s, it's still positioned pretty well. All right. See you guys. Let me know what you think. Um.